Hi, I'm Lee Richardson with the Brain Performance Center, and today I'd like to get Bill Wallace in your head because Bill is a legacy, and it's a legacy built off of kindness and helping other people. And sometimes, you know, we build our legacy and we take a few people down, and I don't think that Bill's ever done that, not knowingly. So he's a man of many, many talents. Bill, I'm so pleased to have you here with me today. I'm honored to be here, Lee. Thank you. So, you know, you built this legacy over time. What, what were your beliefs in the beginning? What inspired you to, to, take, to build yourself in this direction? I came across servant leadership through a very, very unique man. His name is Herb Kelleher. Herb's no longer with us, but in 1979, I received a letter. And that letter said, would you help us build a house? And at that time, I was in the lumber business. And I was kind of a smart aleck. And I said with a Sharpie, if you're crazy enough to ask, I'm crazy enough to say yes. Would you like to tell me about it? Send it back. And it was from a Dr. Uh, Dale. And he was the chief oncologist at Children's Medical Center, now Children's Health. And that house was the Ronald McDonald House of Dallas. And I got involved because I thought they couldn't do it without me. We opened debt free, Valentine's Day 1981, and six months later I realized that was the gas in my tank. That was the most self-serving thing that I'd ever done in my life. And probably 15 years later I was giving a talk and Dr. Mara Schreier Fleming asked me a question. She said, if you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? And it was almost as though I was in that seventh level of consciousness, way up here, looking at myself down on the stage, not really knowing what I was saying. And I said, if I could have received that letter one day, one week, one month, one lifetime earlier, because it truly changed my life. And through that, and through the Ronald McDonald House, I met Herb Kelleher, and Herb became my mentor. I also had another mentor, Cadillac dealer, Roger Meyer, who's the largest Cadillac dealer in the Southwest. And, uh, both of them were practicing something called servant leadership. And a lady who's, again, no longer with us, Anne Marie Cooper, was actually inside of Southwest Airlines working with the company and the culture of servant leadership. And it got in my head. I love your comment, get in your head. Well, it did. It got in my head. It got in my DNA. It got in my genes. And I was in, went into the insurance business in 1983. And in 1988, on March of 1988, I was sitting in Herb's office. And Herb said, Wallace, when you figure out why I should do business with you, come back. Now get out and figure it out. Typical Southwest Airlines, Herb Kelleher style. And of course, he calls me the next day. We're laughing. But uh, that caused me to look at all the networking groups in North Texas that I could find and look for what people did not like, not what they liked, did not like, because I, I looked to start something at a very, high, a very high level networking group, perhaps mentor group, perhaps informal board of directors, to set myself apart from the herd, literally. And in setting myself apart from the herd, I found myself setting other people apart from the herd. And I found that giving, that giving side of it, because I would invite people to Success North Dallas to meet other people. And lo and behold, they started doing that. And at the end, when I retired from insurance, 90% of my business was coming out of Success North Dallas, which I never imagined. I thought it'd last three to five years. I'd pay my dues, I'd be done with it. But somebody upstairs got a hold of it and changed the whole track. But that's you know a long answer to your question, but it just, the DNA, the the DNA of uh, the qualifications for membership in Success North Dallas. Be a success in your own eyes. I have no right to define what success is for you. Let's Thank honor you. our commitments. Be a giver. So be a giver. Go back to the handshake. Honor your commitments. It's all about our fellow men and women. Be a, be a giver. So it very simply put, be, be a success in your own eyes, honor your commitments, and be a giver. And that's what has made Success North Dallas what it is and why instead of three to five years, 
it stayed, it's still around 31 years later and going strong. And it is going strong, and that's actually how I met Bill. I had been to a lot of networking groups, and you know, you go with the hopes that you're going to be able to connect with somebody, be a resource to somebody, find somebody there that can be a resource to you, and you walk away and you've got all these business cards, but you're, and, and you've got all these sales pitches. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. So when I went to Success North, I was blown away, absolutely blown away. People came up to me, they greeted me, they were kind to me, but they really didn't try to sell me anything. You know, come sit, come sit here. Uh, made me feel so incredibly welcome. And when I left, the only thought I had in my mind was, third Wednesday of the month, I'll be back. <laughs> well, if you think about it, I said we look for everything that people, I look for everything that people did not like. Well, what people didn't like were card pushers. And walking around with a deck of cards in your hand, you know you're gonna be dealt either number one or number 52. And those, and pitch bookers running around selling their wares, selling from the lectern, selling in the room, no. Some friend of mine said, ah, no coins trade hands in the temple. Hey, it's not a bad thing when you think about it. And then uh, we had to start charging guests, but initially we didn't charge a guest. And, but back in 1988, it was interesting. The last thing that people did not want in networking were women. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget when I went back to Herb and Roger, and I went through this list, you know, pitch bookers, cards. I haven't given a card away in 15 years. I haven't asked permission to give to you, even if you've asked me for it. But the card pushers, uh, just the, the pitch bookers, you, you think about it, the, I, it, it tarnishes a room, in my opinion. So we don't allow card pushers, but cards are given away relationship cards, those cards are built. And then you think about it, what, what, what is networking really when it comes to this? Well, back then, they, people did not want women in networking. And I said, I went back to Herb, and I, I was going through this list, and I got down to women. They both, Herb and Roger said, yeah. And I said, nope. You're gonna have women? Yep. You're gonna have a problem. I said, no, sir, I'm gonna have a big problem. We're gonna be a minimum of 30% women from day one because you said create transformational change through disruption. Women like were that. my disruptor. And ladies, all of you ladies out there, you are why we're here 31 years later. You had my back in unbelievable ways. And I ended up with some of the greatest women in the U.S. as clients, as insurance clients. But I didn't really understand what Herb said when he stood up and said, well, heck, Wallace, I gave him hot pants and booze, which if you know the Southwest Airlines, hot pants, uh, free alcohol, free peanuts when they started the airline. You give them women in networking. 25 years later, when we did the only lunch we've ever done, Ambridge Hotels paid for the whole thing. Ross Perot Sr. welcomed, Boone Pickens hosted. We had the CEOs of Fleur, USAA, BNSF, and blank, blank, 7-Eleven, all in the same dais. We honored Nancy Lieberman, and I looked out at the room, and it was one of my proudest moments. The room was 50% women. And when you come to Success North Dallas, you'll find a room that'll run from 35 to 45, maybe even 50% women. Uh, because that's what we do, and that's how we do it. And we do it with love. Some people will ask me, are you a faith-based organization? No, we are not a faith-based organization by the name above the door, but by the actions of all in the room, because it's all about our fellow men and women. It is, and one of the things that really touched my heart, it's so hard to be in transition. You know, it's so hard to be in between careers, and and one of the, the way that you end each meeting each month is asking those that are in transition to stand up and just introduce themselves, and that just puts such a positive energy in the room. It does, and and we 
we ask them to come down to the front afterwards. We ask anybody in the room that has an idea for them to come down and visit with them. And we also introduce anyone new to Dallas. It's hard to come to a new city. And we try to help there as well. And we have companies that actually come to us and join prior to moving to Dallas so they'll have a, quote, foot in the door, as somebody said. But it's been amazing. And I'll never forget, we had the highest ranking female, the largest company in China, wow. Lenovo. She flew over to speak. And she hired several people in several countries out of that room over the next six months. So it does work. That's a win-win. Oh, absolutely. That's a huge win-win. Well, just getting her to speak was a win-win, but then when she hired some people, I was like, this is, this is fabulous. <laughs> this and is icing on the cake. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And then we get to do great things. You know, we've had several inflection points. One, we started meeting at the Landmark Club over at Park Central. And for you that don't know that, that's 75 and 635 LBJ. And they stopped serving food. Then we were in our, we were in our fourth year. So we looked around, we looked at the demographics and tried to call, do a little geo-positioning and find the right place for our people. We ended up at Prestonwood Country Club and they have truly become our home. We've been there for 26 years uh, and have a fabulous relationship with both Prestonwood and Club Corp, but that was gave us more space. And so we were able to grow. And then I ran into this group called PLP, Professional Leadership Program, out of the University of North Texas. And they were talking about needing mentors and it was a non-credit course, but it was Backpack to briefcase was their moniker. Preparing I like that. juniors. You could, had to be a junior to be in it. And we adopted them. And the next year they had more mentors than they had students. And so we started mentoring. And that was a huge, huge move. And then we started presenting and have now for 18 years the Dallas Police Officer of the Year and that meeting is a study in humility. We had the meeting actually a few days back where we presented the 18th time, the gentleman John T. Nash III, Sergeant John T. Nash III. And when you heard this man speak, and you heard the chief speak, and you saw this man cry, there were a lot of tears shed in that room. Humility beyond, beyond measure. And it is truly my favorite meeting of the year. And then March of this year, we have the CEO of Club Corp joining us. But we've had speakers come from all over the world. Emphasis out of India, Scotland Yard's, head of Scotland Yard, from Canada, from South America. And we do not pay speakers their expenses. They come because of the people in the room. They don't come because of me. They come because of the people in the room, the people that have started 97 companies, a thousand jobs, seven Ernst & Young Entrepreneurs of the Year. Wow. And it's a, it's, it's a cultural shock to a lot of people. I'll never forget the, both Donnie Nelson and the, Kevin Fagan, the head of DFW Airport at that time, both made the, pretty much the same comment. I've never had a receiving line this long, and especially a line where no one asked for anything from me. And I heard that comment from both of them, which just warmed my heart. Absolutely, because that's what it's all about, you know. And you've kind of taken your success north. You have that as an organization, but you've kind of taken that up a level, and you've published a book, Being a Catalyst for Success, and this has been published in the last year. Yes. So tell me a little bit about what prompted you to write this book. Well, being a catalyst for success, when you think about it, pretty much defines that room. And then the subtitle for this is The Fulfilling Life of a Servant Leader. And that was a journey. I, I can only tell you, when I go in my closet and I see a 60,000 word manuscript, I couldn't write about me. I couldn't write about Success North Dallas. And then I met this gentleman in California through, uh, I'm part of help start the C-Suite Network nationally and part of the Hero Club and by the name of Mitchell Levy, all that books, 
And he said, you need to take another look at this. And I said, yes, it's one of my sage goals for our 30th year for Success North Dallas. I want to do it. I need to do it. And he, had a, he has a company called Ah, A-H-A, That Books. Hmm. And he's published about 800 books. But he was able to work with me and bring my sage goal to fruition where we took the, the best. We took snippets out of all of this, these hundreds of pages, it seemed like just took snippets out of them and published a book of almost isms and quotes and ideas. And it's just, it became a number one bestseller in five categories. It's just been a phenomenal success, but it's also been a phenomenal gift to have met a man like Mitchell Levy and to work with him now on several other projects. He's out of Cupertino, California. Uh, and he's spoken a couple he of times. He has spoken twice. Yeah. In fact, yeah. he spoke in December, and we wrote a book during the meeting. I am so everybody, sorry I missed that meeting. Everybody participating, and it's what out there fun. as well. So it is fun. You know, if, if one of my life isms, mm -hmm. if it's not fun, don't do it. If you have to do it, find a way to make it fun first. You can. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and truly, you can. You do not need to be in this negative world. You, when we think about negativity, we think, oh, all of this, all of this. It's not that. There is no negativity out in the world unless you internalize it and bring it into your world. Just leave it out there. Don't open your arms to it. Don't be open to receive. Exactly. And my second lifeism is always a double win. If it ever ceases to be a double win, fix it or get out now, not tomorrow. Have you ever had a situation where you couldn't make it a double win? I have. I have, and I've acknowledged that, and I've spoken to the other person about it. One of the very interesting ones is when I left the agency system in insurance, I eliminated close to 13% of my clientele. I gave them away. Almost in it, by the time I finished the year, it was at 20%. Because this 18, 20% was taking up 40, 50% of my time. Oh. And they were the complainers, the moaners. There was never a good thing. Before the cell phones, you'd pick up the phone. Hey! And your whole inside would go, oh, it's him. Or, oh, it's her. Except for one person. My attorney, who lived next door to my mother. Loved him. Great friend. But he was one of those. And I called him up and I told him, I said, I'm getting rid of my clientele, but I'm keeping you. And we'll see how it works, but you have to understand this, this, and this. And I tried to, I tried. A year later, I fired him. <laughs> because sometimes just don't change the spots. Yeah, there so, you go. You know, but it's, it's being open up front about it, I think, more than anything else. And then I've had some situations where I've gone in and I said, <clears throat> this isn't working. And we've had a conversation because we were honest with each other and we found, have found a way to make it work. And I think you, you bring up a really good point. You've got to have conversation around it. You've got to sit down with somebody and look them in the eye and say, what can we do? Uh, or, or do we try to do anything? Or do we walk away? I'd rather shake hands with you and walk away friends. Exactly. You know, a dear friend of mine, and I think she's even trademarked this, words are currency. Well, she should have. Tammy Kling. Words, yeah. are, words are currency. And uh, this lady does something once a year, which I help facilitate, called the conversation. I was there and last year. It's an unbelievable thing. But there are so many ways to start a conversation, but there are very few ways to end it very few ways other than to end it on a positive note. And if you don't, then your conversation is gone. And then my third life is, which goes right to the attorney as well, I'm always doing great. The definition of great may vary greatly from day to day, but I'm always doing great. Why? Because I don't want the complainers, the boners, the whiners <clears throat> to drag me down. And that's their number one goal in life. And we're in Texas. 
across the street there, there's a cow pen. It's already full of that brown stuff. Go on over there. But if you really want to make a change, I'll embrace you and we'll work together on that. And that's really when you think about it, if it's not fun, don't do it. If you have to do it, find a way to make it fun first. That's number one. Number two, always a double win. If it ceases to be a double win, fix it or get out now, not tomorrow. And finally, this is that control side. This is leaving the negativity out side. I'm always doing great. The definition of great may vary greatly from day to day, but I'm always doing great. Sometimes that's hard as, <clears throat> but. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. So as you move forward, you know, what do you see in your future? Do you want to just keep doing what you're doing? Or do you have hopes and dreams still left in that, in that head, in your head? Well, in the insurance space, I worked with 164 startups and doing life, health, disability, business planning, buy, sales, key person. And now many of my clients, we banded together and we'll do some funding, company funding, we'll build teams. We've taken uh, 10,000 square feet out of the star and we're rolling up 18 AI, artificial intelligence and tech companies right now as we speak. Uh, we're having fun doing it and it's on an international basis. So that's one thing. Another book, uh, it's not who you know, it's not what you know, it's what you know about who you know. Wait For a minute, say that again? It's not who you know, it's not what you know. It's what you know about who you know. Working you on that go. with a gentleman by the name of Mark Graham and uh, having a lot of fun with that. So I don't understand the word retirement. I know it's supposed to be wonderful, but I've got the greatest job in the world. I get to put two people together, take a step back, and watch the magic happen. And sometimes I might actually get paid for it. It's a ball. I love it. Well, you know what? That's a, that is a great place to be. It truly is. And I agree with you. What is retirement? You know, to me, retirement is doing what makes you happy. And if doing what makes you happy means continuing your professional efforts, Keep going. I so agree with you because I wouldn't know what to do without the people. When I walk up to the front of Success North Dallas and I look out and I see those 200 people and it started with 14 people and I think about what's happened in that room, what's come out of that room to transform lives. You know, we, we talk about networking. Well, I don't think people really understand what networking could be and it's certainly not card pushing. Because the first level, network has basically three levels. The first level is when two people meet each other, bam, yeah, bam. The chances are 80% that both cards are going to go in the trash can, 95% chance that one of them will. So why don't you do something a little bit different? When you ask me for my card, it comes out of my pocket, I hand it to you like this, it has one corner rounded, so why is the corner rounded, so you'll ask. It has a story. The logo, success. Success is what we all aspire to. The C's are interconnecting. The interconnecting C's are how we do it. And the card turns over and it says connecting the right people for the right reasons at the right time. The story causes the card to be kept. We started a contest one year with a gentleman out of New York City that C-suite, Jeff Hazlett and it's called the 118. 118 seconds is the average elevator ride in New York City. You have eight seconds to tell them who you are and 110 seconds to learn everything you can about them, the other person, while leaving a little hook at the end, whatever that may be, that's, it. that's exciting. I'd love to hear more about it. Or, wow, you're doing that? I'd love to get together for coffee and hear more about it. Because is it not the passion with which you embrace your significant other that governs the passion with which that embrace is returned? Is it not? It is. Are you doing that with your clients? Are you doing that with your friends? Are you doing that with your prospects? No. More often than not, no. But you should be. You should be. Absolutely. Because it's that love. It's that embrace. It's that connection mm -hmm. that causes things. It's the causality of life. It causes things to happen. 
You know, Bill, you make it sound so easy, but it's really not. No. It's really not. And I think that it started within you many, many years ago. Well, it did. It did. I had a great mom, a great dad. My mother was a professional teacher. My mother taught third grade with an EED until they made her quit. She taught Sunday school at Park City's Baptist Church until she couldn't walk. And she taught me a lot. My father was a banker. Uh, so I got to see two pretty good sides. And like I said, you know, the three levels of networking, my dad was a phenomenal networker because the first level is networking, bam. You gotta do something more. The second level is net weaving. And it's when you take two networks and start weaving them together because you're forming an attachment. But what does that really do? Well, that weaves you with every network I'm woven with, every network that Lee is woven with. And then the top level of networking, which is what I truly learned from my father, and I'll tell you a short story as to why, but I truly learned it from him, is the servant leadership side of it. When you lead with meeting someone and the first thought that's going through your mind is, who might I connect Lee to that would help Lee? Who might I connect Lee to that Lee might benefit? And all of a sudden you find people doing the same thing for you. Like I said, I brought people to Success North Dallas to meet people and lo and behold, they started bringing them there to meet me. And it just works. It does, and you know what? The way that I would say that is, what goes around comes around. Amen to that. And on that note, We'll close. Bill, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm gonna and I can get this book off of Amazon. You can get that book off of Amazon and Lee, the way we close every meeting, Success North Dallas, is may you do what you love to do with people you love to do it with on purpose. God bless and Godspeed. Thank you. That thank was a great you. ending. Wow, this has been fun. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, could I come back? Absolutely. <laughs>